tomorrow, you want to join Increasing Faith Ministries with Pastors Tammy and Curtis Stevens from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for the Hour of Power. It's going to be a quick word to get your day started, to help uplift you, to get you some understanding, and you definitely don't want to miss out. So again, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., Facebook Live, and it will also be streamed on YouTube. Hey, this is Nell from Impressive Tees. We're your go-to source for statement tees and hoodies. We carry a wide range of colors and sizes from youth to 5XL. If you have a saying, slogan, tagline, or quote, let Impressive Tees bring your statement to life. Also, check out the new kingdom apparel created by pastors Curtis and Tammy Stevens of Increasing Faith Ministries. Call now at 313-655-2061. That's 313-655-2061 for more info. Hi, my name is Cammie Bradford. Tune in to the Hour of Power live on Facebook and the Hour of Power Extra on YouTube book, chapter, and verse with Pastor Curtis and Tammy Stevens every Tuesday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's you going to bless you. <laughs> Boutique, where we have the best in premium virgin eggs. Come and visit us at 2131 Pleasant Hill Road, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, Suite 110. Our unique collection of full lace and lace front wigs will captivate you. Also, our new design 6x6 closures and our 13x6 lace front wigs. Our mission is to provide the best quality service for our customers. If you're going out for a night out on the town, or a red carpet event. Let us handle all of your hair care needs and transform you. Thank you for letting us service your beauty and hair care needs. This is your girl, Regina Love. Don't you just love it? And did you know that every Tuesday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., Pastor Curtis and Pastor Tammy are hosting the Hour of Power on Facebook Live and the Hour of Power Extra on YouTube? Heads up. Sweet, now I still got 23 hours to do kingdom living, be a businesswoman, and I still be able to tap into that new series, the book, chapter, and verse. I can't wait. The purpose of book, chapter, and verse is to bring clarity to the word of God. Go line upon line, precept upon precept. Just break it down so that even my children can understand it. Make it a plain so that you have a good understanding of what the word of God talks about. All right. We out. Yep. Oh, guess that's my cue. Looking forward to seeing you there. Real quick, I forgot to mention. My apologies. You can still join us every Sunday at 12 noon, 1600 Agape Way in Decatur, Georgia. Come experience the word live, Great Faith Ministries Atlanta. We'll see you there. <laughs>
guys doing? Stack First Publishing LLC. I'm the CEO, Mr. Simmons. I'm here to give you a great business that you guys been missing in Detroit. We're here to open a whole bunch of doors for a lot of stuff you guys don't even know that y'all missing. Like all the thoughts and stuff that's in your head that you can't get out on pen, you can't get out on paper, you can't get out on music, you can't get out in the movies, we're gonna get it out for you. We're here to help everybody around the world make this happen. Come on, join us. Hey, hey, it's Pam. I'm here to ask you to tune in to the Hour of Power on Facebook and the Hour of Power Extra on YouTube. Book, chapter, and verse with Pastor Curtis and Tammy Stevens. 8 a.m. every Tuesday through Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to take it in right here. Where else can you get beauty and knowledge in the same place? Tune in, guys. I'm Tanisha Johnson, author and book strategist. For over 10 years, I've written 15 books, produced a sold out stage production, and helped hundreds birth their best selling books. Many people have a great idea for a book, but they have no idea where to start. They are literally staring at a blank page. So it's my purpose and my passion to help them in their journey. So I created something called the Red Ink Conference a live event for aspiring authors, giving them the necessary tools to brand, publish, and market their book. And as much as I love live events, I thrive best when I'm working with individuals one-on-one. -on -one. Being able to help someone with their book project from start to finish is what I live for. That's why I launched my virtual book strategy program. In this program, you'll receive strategic direction for your book and clarity on your target market and I'll teach you the tools on how to monetize your message. You'll even have the option to work with me personally to write your book and finish it in record time. The process of writing and publishing a book can seem overwhelming, but I'm here to teach you how easy it can be. So let's talk today about how we can work together to get your book started. For more information, please visit www.soitiswritten.com Dot net or email info at so it is written dot net. You may also reach us by phone by dialing 313-777-8607. Well, welcome to the Our Power. We're your hosts. Pastor Curtis and Pastor Tammy. The Our Power is designed to bring the kingdom believers understanding of the word of God in context. So we go book, chapter and verse. And verse was birthed out of the ideology and the mindset of making sure that we can give people something that they can understand and apply to their everyday lives. Our prayer is that as you partake of this, that you will be able to take the word of God and apply it to your life. And not only that, be able to share it with someone else. So get your pen, get your paper, and as Pastor Tammy always say, put your thinking caps on because we're going into the Word of God. We'll be back a little bit later with some more information. If you give Him glory right now, I tell you to open your mouth and praise God. I tell you to praise Him. I tell you to thank Him. I tell you to thank Him. I dare you, something ought to leap in you, yes. something ought to leap in you, yes. go on and praise God to something leap in you, I feel change breaking right now, I feel something moving right now, God is moving, God is delivering right now, I said God is delivering right now, God deliver, God heal, do it God, only you can do it. Heal right now. God is healing this brother right here. There's something that was going on in his body. But I hear the spirit of the Lord say, when you go back to the position, when you go again, the numbers are going to be different. Things are going to be different. Right now you're feeling some kind of way. But God sent you and told you today, I'm going to move. God says, I'm moving right now. God says I'm moving right now. Yeah, yeah. We got to make a sound. We're commanding sickness.
sickness and disease to leave our brother's body right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He got an evil report. He really ain't talked to nobody. But God sent him today. And God told me when I looked at him, tell him he's healed. Tell him he's set free. Tell him he's delivered. Tell him he's going to live and he's not going to die. Tell him that I'm supernaturally moving in his body. I'm moving in your blood. I'm moving in your body right now. There's a shout that want to come out of you. God said if you shout right now, if you go ahead and give me a praise right now, the enemy is trying to keep you from giving God glory. But I dare you to open your mouth and say thank you. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. There's somebody in here need a move from God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's a move in this place. Little sister, God didn't already done it. God is moving right now. God has already done it. Where there was a no, God says yes. Where there was a no, God says yes. There's a shift in your life. There's a shift in your life. While I'm prophesying to you, angels are ministering. Angels are moving yes. on your behalf. There's a sound in this house. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a sound Come in this on, house. Pastor. There's a sound on, in this pastor. house. There's a sound in this Come house. On, angels are moving. Ministering to the saints. The heirs of salvation. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. He's moving for your son. He's healing. He's moving for your son. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, there's protection for him. There's protection for him. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, and COVID won't touch him. And COVID won't touch him. And COVID won't touch him. Glory to God. There's an angel with him right now. I've yeah, never God. seen your son. But there's an angel right now shaking the gates and yes. shaking the doors. And he's going to be free. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, tell her I'm shaking the doors. I'm opening up the doors. Chains are falling off your son. The things that had him bound, they're loosening him right now. Glory to God. Because of the prayers of the saints, something is moving. Come on, saints, pray. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, There's yeah. a brother right there. Right there. There's something God is doing in you right now. God says, yes, this is your season. And the business is going to work. And the things that you've been believing me about secretly going to work for you, says God. God says, I'm dropping a strategy in you. I'm dropping wisdom in you, says the Spirit of God. God says, when you begin to read the books on finances, it's going to make sense to you. God says, when you open the books concerning how to do business, it's going to make sense to you, says the Spirit of God. God says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I have never turned my back on you. There may be some folks that told you God ain't with you, but they lied. They don't know your relationship with God. They don't know the secret times. You may not pray the way everybody else prays, but God does know your voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this young man. Bless him, God. Bless his endeavors. Bless him because his great-great-grandmama prayed. Bless him because his great-great-grandfather prayed. Bless him because the prophetic words have gone over his life. Bless him, Father, and I thank you for it. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Somebody Jesus give God some glory. There's some folks watching right now by way of social media. They're saying, you know what? I wish I was there. But they are here. They're here in spirit. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel like praising God. What y'all going to do? Yeah. I, I feel like giving God a hallelujah. 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 Yeah. See, you don't know what I've been through in COVID. Y'all really don't know. Hallelujah. <laughs> But God been good to me right in the middle of COVID. I said right in the middle of COVID, he saved my life. Right in the middle of COVID, he came through for me. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all think you know, but God's been good to this girl. I, I want to praise him right now. I want to give him glory right now. I, I got to praise him. I got to thank him. I got to thank God right now. I got to give him glory. 
Because he didn't forget little old me. He didn't yeah. forget me. Y'all better praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad you're here. Turn to the other side. We're practicing social distancing. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I, I'm glad you're here. Glory to God. Thank God for Jesus one more time. Let's give the spirit of Christ a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for our spiritual leaders, Apostle Wayne T. Jackson and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Curtis, campus pastor. Thank God for him and that magnificent word on the kingdom that he keeps on teaching us. Glory to God. Yes. Go to Matthew 6 and 33. We are talking about prayer. Yes. We are still talking about prayer and how to get our prayers answered, our petition prayers. How many of you got some things before God right now? Okay, I got some things before God. Anybody? Okay, I got some things before God, and I'm believing God. And if there's a way to pray to move the hand of God, I want to know. How many of you know that there's a way to pray that can move the hand of God? If you don't know, you're going to know by the time you leave. So many times we have prayed and we didn't have no confidence in our prayers simply because we didn't know how to pray according to the will of God. The Bible says that when we pray, this is the confidence that we should have in him. That if we pray anything according to his will, somebody say his will. See, one of the things that I've learned is most of the believers don't know the will of God because they don't taught, they're not taught to read the Bible. We're taught to listen to the preacher, but we're not taught to read our Bible. And when you become a part of anything, usually they give you a manual. Even if you join the gym, they tell you the do's and the don'ts. You can't smoke no weed up in here. You can't, don't go get no steroids up in here. Don't let nobody put no needles in your arm up in here. Don't do nothing illegal here. Everything we join has a booklet and we should read it. But when we become a part of the body of Christ, we have this issue about reading the word of God. We'd rather take somebody else's word for it because they got a title. We'd rather take somebody's word about what God says because they're magical and mystical. They sound real spooky. And if it sounds spooky, it must be God. But I got news for you. If it don't agree with this Bible, I don't care how spooky you sound. I don't care how magical you sound. If it don't agree with this word, then it ain't God. So we're learning how to pray according to the will of God. Real quickly, let's go to Matthew 6 and 33. This is our foundation scripture concerning kingdom. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. When you learn how to pray, you will never have to ask God for no money. When you learn how to pray real good, you won't have to walk around the car seven times. When you learn how to pray, you will not have to walk around the house seven times. When you learn how to pray, God will give you a strategy to get your credit straight. Oh, I, I got one clap in the back. Let me see who that is in the back. Because y'all not saying that right here, that back, that back. Okay. I said, when you pray and you pray right, he'll tell you you ain't got no integrity. Get your name together so you don't have to walk around the car seven times and then put some oil on the tires. You'll understand that you ain't going to get no car in Jesus' name. You're going to get a car in your name. You ain't going to get no house in Jesus' name. You're going to get a house in your name. And when you pray and the Holy Ghost tell you this is your problem right here, you have no integrity. You got to straighten things out. Come on, somebody. You ain't going to give $9.99, come on somebody, and magically your debt going to go away. Angels don't steal. Angels don't steal. The Bible says they, they minister, they supply to you what you need according to the kingdom. The Bible says that the angels excel in strength, hearkening to the voice word of God. They don't hearken to no thievery. See, I didn't get nothing. Thank you, Pastor Curtis. Let's go real quick to 2 Chronicles. See, we got to get some real good understanding on how to pray. See, I, I was brought up in church, so I know all the ain't going to move God prayers. See, I know how to pray and don't move God. I know how to go before God and tell God I'm a no-down, filthy rag, and I ain't worthy. That ain't going to get no answer. Because if you don't understand you, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you are already off. Okay, let me go over here. Let let me, I don't want to get out of the cam, camera view. I said, if you don't know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you go before God talking about I'm filthy, I ain't no good, ain't nothing good about me, you didn't miss it because he said, come boldly to the throne of grace at a time of need. You can't go boldly thinking you ain't got nothing, you ain't about nothing, you a filthy rat. When you go, you got to go knowing that when I pray, God going to hear me. 
You got to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know that you've been made in the image and likeness of God. You got to know that you are part of the body of Christ. You got to know that Jesus is the propitiation, the payment in full. He took all the penalty of our sin. I said he is the propitiation. He is the payment in full. When the Lamb of God showed up, the Bible says, Behold, the Lamb of God cometh to take away the sins of the world. At one time, we was out there. See, the problem with most of us is we don't understand God ain't mad at the folks that's still out there. We're supposed to tell them God ain't mad at you. Come on in the family. We preaching hell and damnation not understanding God loved them just like he loved us. We just got in the body faster than they did. We got in the body before they did. But it is our job to minister reconciliation. Bring them back into the family. So when you know how to pray, can I tell you something? I don't know about this praying folks can do. What they get out of prayer mean. Okay, let me say it again. I don't know about this prayer that people are doing that they come out of prayer mean. I'm going to say that one more time. I have no idea who you talking to in your prayer time that you can come out of prayer mean. Okay. Cause when I come out of prayer, talking to the king of the universe, talking to love itself, all I want to do is love on somebody. I don't care if you a street walker, dope head, crack head, come on somebody. I don't care nothing about your sexuality. All I want to do is love on you. Y'all quiet. See, when you've been in the presence of love itself, how in the world can you come out being mean to somebody and damning them to hell? Religion got you like that. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, when you're there, say amen. I said, I don't know nothing about this Holy Ghost folks got that it make you mean to folks. I don't know about this Holy Ghost that folks got that it won't treat folks right. I don't know about that Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, I got love everybody. I love my enemies. Those that despitefully misuse me. Those that do evil to me, I love them anyway. I stay away from them, but I do love them. See, y'all didn't get that. I, I love you, but I'm going to stay away from you. Because you bit me once, you ain't going to bite me no more. But I sure enough love you. And if you ever need anything, I'm your girl. I'll come through for you. But I ain't stutting you. I ain't going to hang out with you. Y'all quiet. But I sure enough love you. I sure enough got the love of God in my heart towards you. Because I didn't done somebody wrong. I didn't showed out once or twice in my life. Y'all quiet. I know y'all always been saved. But I ain't always been saved. You looking at somebody that got washed in the blood. I've been washed, y'all, because I had some mess about me. I've done folks wrong, but, I, but God forgave me, and I went to them and asked them to forgive me. And whether they forgave me or not, I asked. Okay. Whether they did it or not, I asked. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, let me look at y'all real good. We talking about prayer. If my people, which are called by my name. See, you got to understand who you are and whose name you call by. See, you ain't called by the world's name. You call by Jesus' name. You are a representative, okay, ambassador of the kingdom. When you show up, Jesus just showed up. And Jesus, when I read everywhere Jesus went, Jesus was making sure the captives got set free. Jesus was laying hands on the sick. Jesus was praying for folks. Jesus wasn't condemning nobody but religious folks. But anybody that needed help, Jesus came through. You and I are the representatives of Jesus. The Bible says when Jesus would go in a deserted place and pray, he'd come back anointed to take care of anybody's needs. When you pray, you ought to come back anointed. getting really nothing but it's okay i said when you pray when you need the presence of god the burden removing yoke destroying power of god should be up on you and when people come into your presence they should know that one right there been with god there should be a prophetic word that can leave your mouth in any situation I, any situation i can speak to it and i can change the circumstance and situation people should seek you out because you pray and something happens When you pray, something should happen. I'm looking at y'all. Not just the preacher. Not just the prophet. 
not just the evangelist, not just the pastor, the body of Christ should be able to pray and come into any situation and change it. You wonder why folks keep on asking you stuff. They asking because they see the glory on y'all. See, y'all just got through prophetically saying, the glory, it's in the glory, it's in the glory, it's in the glory. And you mess around and say that, and the glory show up. And then you start walking in the glory, and folks start seeing you, and they like it's something about her. I don't know. I, I just like her. I don't know, but I just want to be around her. Every time you come in the room, you know your aura show up. They don't know how to explain it. All they know is when you come in the room, I don't, hey, 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 she didn't come up in here, don't start that cussing. Hey, 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 I don't know why it is about her, but it's something about her. When she show up, something supernatural go to happening. When she show up, things begin to change in the atmosphere. That's been somebody with God. They've been with God. Come on, y'all. And that's what people should feel when you pray. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, watch this, watch this, shall, shall humble themselves. Acknowledge and admit you need God. Acknowledge and admit I need God. I need his ways. I need his commandments. I need his strategies. I don't know what to do. Because the reason I'm in the predicament I'm in is because I didn't humble myself. Most times when we go to God in prayer, most times it's because we didn't messed up something. We ain't going to God most times when everything all right. No, we not. You ain't, hey, God, I just want to come to you. No, you go on when I didn't messed up. I, I didn't messed up and I know I didn't messed up. Humble yourself. See, most of the stuff we spend all that extra time on, if we just humble ourselves and say, I don't know. If we stop trying to do it ourselves and find out what the will of God is concerning the situation. We, get, we, we take ourselves out of years of going around the same mountain. If we would just go ahead and ask God, what is your will concerning this situation? What is your will concerning me? I can't do it like my mama did it. I can't do it like my pastor saying do it. I got to ask you, what is the will for my life? I got to find out what is my part in the body of Christ. I got to pray and ask God, who am I in the body? Y'all quiet. We got folks trying to be an apostle. Baby, you ain't no apostle. Did you pray and ask God, what is the will of God for your life? You can't teach nobody out of paper bag. You ain't called for that, y'all quiet. And then we got to try to figure out what you talking about. Tell me you an apostle. I can't tell. Did God tell you that? Y'all quiet. So we got folks trying to be pastors. God ain't called you for that. Okay, y'all, 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 y'all do, come on. You ain't pray for the, about that. You, you saw somebody walking in the grace of what God called them to do, and you thought that looked easy. When you anointed for it, it is. When you pray and it's your kingdom assignment, it is. Now, I come with some bumps and some bruises, but when you're called for it, it don't look like you're really going through nothing. You might be going through something, but it's the anointing and the power of God that is grace in your life for you to do your kingdom assignment. See, when you get the answer from God, when you pray and God answer you, can't no man change your mind. I'm teaching good right there. I'm walking through this. I'm walking through this harvest right here. I said, when you pray and you know that God answered you, it don't matter what mama said. I love you, mama, but you ain't God. It don't matter what big daddy said. It don't matter what grandma said. It don't matter what the pastor said. I didn't hear from God. You can't move me because I didn't pray. And I didn't got a strategy and an answer from the true and living God. And he ain't going to let me down. Come on, somebody. See, this is what we need when we pray. This is the kind of confidence we got to go. Knowing if God speak, and he will. If I pray according to his will, he'll speak to me. I wish somebody heard me right there. See, some of us, we trying to figure out, is it God? Do it line up with the will? Somebody say, that's it. How you know it's God? There's a lot of voices talking. See, this is why we can't be real spooky in prayer. 
You got to be able to land in the word. Because when you step out in the spirit, there's a whole lot of voices talking. I said, when you step out in the spirit in prayer and you believe in that you're going to receive what God already said, you got to know that when you step out there, it's a whole lot of voices. But you better be able to line up what you hear with the will of God. Nope, that ain't the will. Move. I'm not going to bring that out of the realm of the spirit. That ain't God. That ain't a strategy for me. That's something else. Come on, somebody. You got to know the difference between your will and God's will. Okay, we're going to look at scripture. He says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. When you pray according to God's word, when you seek his face, how do I seek God's face? Did you? <laughs> okay, let me go over here. I was in the spirit on the third day. I saw God. See, if you want to see God, you want to open up this word. Because this is his face. And there are words coming out of his mouth. Come on, somebody. Go real quickly to Jeremiah 29. I'm going to try not to walk around too much. Is that all right? I'm trying. I'm trying to stay in this frame. Jeremiah 29. Y'all know I'm so animated. My God, I'm so animated. For those of y'all who don't know, I'm so animated. Jeremiah 29 and 11. This is God. We're talking about prayer. We're talking about when you approach God, you got to know how he feel about you. I'm going to say that again. You got to know his mind concerning you. God ain't trying to beat you. God ain't trying to damn you and condemn you to hell. You make one mistake and the church folks tell you, you're going to hell. You wear bread fingernail polish, you're going to hell. You cut your hair off, you're going to hell. Oh, y'all quiet. You cuss, you know you're going to hell. You don't speak in tongues when they tell you you got to speak in tongues. You know you don't want them, you're going to hell. Huh? Because they don't know how to teach you to receive the Holy Spirit. That's a whole nother teaching. And when you don't get it because mother laid her hands in your stomach and snatched the spirit of God in you, right, mother, right, mother, right, you know, right, right, mother, mother laid hands on you. And, you know, they got mother thinking she's so spiritual and deep. So mother think when she go down there in the prayer room, she big and bad. So she going to go down there, lay hands on your stomach, and then she go, ah! and the whole, you just supposed to start speaking in tongues. No, I don't speak in tongues. I don't know what you're talking about. What, what are you talking about? Who is the Holy Ghost? And why should I receive him? See, y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. And, and why should I receive him? And how I know I ain't getting the devil? How would I know the difference between this? So y'all quiet, y'all. See, this is the stuff that happens to people when they prayed and asked God to come into their life. And then they run into religious folks that mess them all up with a bunch of religious stuff. Some of our children won't come to church right now because they ran into some of them old mothers who didn't know how to explain the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues. It ain't just no feeling. Some folks, you got to teach it to them. Some folks, you got to show me in the Bible. Y'all quiet. Somebody got to take me line upon line, precept about precept, a little here, a little there. You ain't just going to lay your hands on me and magically, boom. No. No. Y'all quiet. Show me in the Bible where I need this and what the Bible says about it. And don't tell me if I don't got the Holy Ghost according to the way you say I'm supposed to have it. I ain't saved. Okay. Because it ain't what happened at Pentecost that saved me. It's what happened at Calvary. 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 Surely he died on Calvary. It's what he did at Calvary. It ain't got nothing to do with the day of Pentecost about my salvation. I said yes to Jesus. Y'all quiet. Now you should get the, 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 the Holy Ghost. You should speak in other tongues. Come on somebody. But you ain't going to tell me I ain't saved if I don't do it. Teach me. Watch this. Y'all all right? I didn't went astray for a minute. 
Jeremiah 29 and 11. I'm going to free somebody right there. You might be watching right now and you like, you know what? I, I prayed and asked God to save me. I went to that church and they told me I didn't want Jesus. But I had prayed. I did want Jesus. I just didn't know to speak in tongues. Or you needed somebody to teach you what it's about. Jeremiah 29 and 11. This is God talking. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Wait a minute. God's got some thoughts about you. I'm going to say it again. God's mind is on you. God thinking about you right now. Even in your mess up. Right now, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Watch this. Thoughts of peace. Wholeness. I'm going to stay right there. God said, I got peace about you. I'm thinking peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking in your life. That's what I think about you. When you approach me, know that what I'm thinking about you is peace, nothing missing, nothing lacking, wholeness. All I want to do is make you whole. All I want you to do is have peace, nothing missing, nothing lacking. When you approach me, don't approach me talking about, Lord, I know you want to kill me. No, I don't. My thoughts about you are good. Come on, somebody. Peace. I want to make you whole. I don't want you to miss nothing. I don't want you to lack nothing. That's all I think about you. Y'all. Oh Lord. Peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking. If you come to God, that's how he sees you. I don't care what you did last night. I don't care if you just got through smoking a blunt and if you came to yourself and said, you know what? I'm so sick of me. I'm going to God. Y'all quiet. He said, good, because my thoughts about you is peace, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Don't let nobody tell you I'm mad at you. Don't let nobody tell you I won't use you. Don't let nobody tell you because you're pregnant, I'm, I'm done with you. Don't let nobody tell you because you had the baby before you was married, I'm done with you. That's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. I said, that's a lie, that's a lie. That's a lie. All he's thinking about is how to get you back in the family, how to bless your life, how to make you whole. That's all he's thinking. I got one, one right there that said hallelujah. You looking at a woman that had the baby before marriage. God wasn't mad at me. God didn't say I never use you. God never said I don't call you a prophetess no more. I'm done with you. I'm through with you. You on your way to hell. I repented. I went before the father understanding that he forgave me. Y'all better come on. I said I went before the father knowing he forgave me. He washed me in his blood. He cleansed me and he let me go free. Y'all better come on here right now. And he still used me. He still sanctified me. He still still set me apart. He still called me a prophet to the nations, even though I messed up. I ain't do nothing but have a baby. Jesus' mama wasn't married either when she got pregnant. Oh, Y'all didn't, didn't get that. I said Mary wasn't married when she got pregnant either. Okay, y'all, y'all, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with your religion. I, I said, Jesus' mama wasn't married when she got pregnant. I know we say it was, you know, a holy, uh, uh, holy imp a pregnancy. I know we say that, but you know, you can't say that in 2020. You can't say that in 2020. All I know is, even if Mary had come to me and said that, I probably would have said, sis, now come on, girl. Come on, sis. Now you know that ain't how it go. An angel came and visited me, sis. Come on now. And that was some, what some folks was thinking. Girl, please. But I like her husband. He went on ahead and got a word from the Lord and married her. Come on, somebody. So for all y'all who've been condemned in religion, for all y'all that folks told you you ain't going to never amount to nothing, for all y'all that get spit on and folks turned their back on you, I'm here to tell you God will use you anyway. God will clean you up and use you anyway. He'll tell you sin no more. Lest the worst thing come up on you, but he will cleanse you. Come on, somebody. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking, and not of evil. See, some of y'all need to share that with some of the mothers at the church, at the old Pentecostal church. At the Pentecostal sanctified. Holy Ghost Bible feel fire baptized. You need with the dolly on your head. You need to tell, oh, mother, mother, I know you think God going to kill me because I had the baby. I'm going to look at y'all over here. I know y'all told me to go and apologize to the church. Y'all quiet. Yeah. You, you, you got to come and stand up. And about 15 of them just didn't get caught. 
about 20 or 50 of them just didn't get caught. You got caught, that's all. Everything lined up that evening. And you got caught. Y'all not saying nothing. You got caught that evening. But there's about 50 of them sitting there. They ain't sitting there rocking their foot on Lord, please. Please let me see my friend. Please, Lord, let me see my friend this month. Because I know I ain't been right. I said, Lord, please let me see my friend this month. Because I know I ain't been right. Yeah, and she out there apologizing. I want to say, first of all, I'm a little old, no good ranch. And I was wrong. And I'm going to ask y'all to forgive me. So what y'all forgiving me for? Because I ain't do it to you. This is my life, so y'all quiet. Only person I need to go to and make it right to is Jesus. And if I made it right with Jesus, everything going to be all right. Y'all quiet. You shame the church. No, baby, I ain't shamed the church. I didn't have this baby. I'm having this baby. I ain't shamed. Y'all, y'all quiet. I'm having this baby. I ain't tipped off, snuck off. I'm having this baby. Watch, watch this. And even if I did sneak off, tip off, God still ain't mad at me. I'm freeing somebody right there. It's about folks right now won't even go to prayer. Because folks that made them feel like you didn't done too much, God don't want you. Y'all quiet. He says, I want to do you good. He says, my thoughts about you are peace and not of evil. Even if you mess up. I'm still thinking good about you. I'm still thinking peace about you. I, I, just like when Adam messed up. I, I told Adam, don't worry. Don't worry, Adam. I'm going to get you out. I'm going to send Jesus. He's going to bruise his head. And he's going to bruise his heel. I'm going to get you out. I know you messed up. But I ain't done with you. I ain't mad at you. You're going to walk through the harvest, but I'm still going to deal with you. I'm still going to love you. Y'all not saying nothing right there. I'm still going to love you. You might have to walk through something that you did because the principle is seed, time, and harvest. So you're going to walk through some of this stuff that you planted, but plant something else. Plant something good so that when you go through the next harvest, come on, it's some stuff I know. I don't know about y'all. It's some stuff I know. Don't ever, never, ever, you, you can't make me. I'll never do it again because I didn't like the harvest. I like what you say. I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. H have y'all ever been through something you, while you was walking through it, you was like, I, I don't like this. I bet you I won't do this no more. I bet you. I bet you I won't do this no more. You walking through it though. You, you walking through it. You're walking over stuff. Yeah, I did that. Now, this, is my, this is my harvest for what I sowed. But I bet you I won't fool with them no more. I bet you I won't say that no more. I bet you I won't deal with that no more. I bet you I won't go that way no more. See, it's some things when you walk through it just right. See, because you got, you know, when we pray and God tell you, I'm going to get you out. But you're going to walk through it. He told Adam, Adam, I'm going to get you out. But you didn't start a cycle. So you're going to walk through that cycle, but I'm going to get man out. Y'all come on. See, there's some things we got to deal with, but God, watch this, but God didn't curse you. See, religion got you thinking when you make a mistake or you did something you knew you was wrong. Anybody ever done that? See, let me tell you something. Some of these folks in, in church, I don't know why he want me to say this. You got a tattoo and you on your way to hell. When the, G when the Bible says when Jesus comes, he's going to have on his thigh, king of kings and lord of lords. He's going to have a vesture. <laughs> he's going to wear a vesture with king of kings and lord. And on his thigh, sound like a tattoo to me. King of kings, y'all quiet, and lord of lords. See, we don't read our Bible. We don't read our Bible. We got folks damning us to hell over a tattoo. Oh, they got them old tattoos. They got them old tattoos. I got tattoos too, but God's still using me. And I got some of them since I've been saved and prophesying. I'm just going to help somebody. Since I've been saved and prophesying. Y'all, I said, since I've been in the blood, washed in the blood. Since I, hey, I might get another one. See, y'all quiet in this sanctified church. I'm freeing y'all. 
I'm freeing y'all to live your best life. Because the Bible said this suit going back to the ground. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Y'all better come on here. And so I'm going to use this body for the kingdom. But God ain't mad at me if I put something on it. As long as it ain't nothing demonic. Y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. I'm, I'm freeing you. Even if you got it, God ain't thinking evil about you. So you got folks, you got to get that off you. You got to get it off you. No, I, the blood, the blood, if I did get something on me that ain't godly, if I did get a symbol on me that ain't godly, come on, y'all. And the way they got things now, they can get that stuff right off you. Y'all all right? When you don't know no better, you don't know no better. But when you know better, you can do better. Somebody give me something. Somebody give me some praise. Give God some praise. He says, and not of evil. Verse number 11 of 29, Jeremiah. And to give you, wait a minute, an expected end. God got an end that he expects for your life. And he already told you, I ain't thinking evil about you. Come on, somebody. And all I want is peace in your life, nothing missing, nothing lacking. And I expect you to get to that expected end. I didn't gave you my son. I didn't got down in a body. God came down and got in the body. We call him Jesus. Y'all quiet. See, some of y'all, y'all didn't realize that. God got in a body, and he came to ensure that you get to this expected end. God ain't mad at you. I'm going to look at y'all, all oh, y'all. Because, see, I said what I said because there's some young folks up in here. And I know y'all got some tattoos. Okay. And some of y'all my age, and you got some. And I'm going to free you. And some of y'all want some. And I'm going to free you. Oh, oh I, I would love to get attacked. Get one. Get Jesus' hands on you. Get something on you if you want to. God ain't mad. See, y'all quiet. Oh, let me stop. Because y'all from the sanctified church. Let me stop. Go real quickly to Mark. Go to Mark. See, for years, I let folks trap me and stuff instead of praying and asking God about it. Okay, did y'all get what I said? I said, for years, I let folks trap me in their religious dogmas. But then I messed around and got in kingdom and got free. Okay. I, I, I found out that I can self-govern. If I get the principles of the word of God, I can self-govern my life. When we go back in Genesis and look at Adam, all Adam had to do was not touch the tree. We don't read nothing else about Adam in that garden. He was told, don't touch the tree. We don't know what Adam was doing. He was self-governing. Y'all quiet. Folks is afraid to hear self-govern. Go find out what God said in his word concerning it and govern your life accordingly. And govern your life accordingly. Stop asking folks that's miserable what they think about your life. Stop asking these religious proselytes what you think about my life. They didn't live miserable 30 years. They ain't trying to see you go up. They ain't trying to see you happy. They ain't Let me tell you something. Stop asking these folks about who you should marry and make a God choice. Okay. Y'all that made me go there. I said, stop asking folks. Well, well, you know he 15 years younger than me. You know he 11 years. You know she 11. You know what you think. No, no. If it agree with scripture. Oh, y'all quiet. See, I'm going to go over here. Look at y'all because they ain't doing me right over here, Tiffany. So I'm going to see what you're going to do. If they treat you right. Watch this. And there's room for growth. They ain't got to be speaking in tongues. They ain't got to be speaking in tongues. See, so y'all, y'all. I said, is there room for growth? Can they grow in the things that I'm freeing you right now? If you let me free you. I, if you let me free. Stop going, going to the board of the church. Now, I'm going to take you to the board. And then if the board say, you not for me, then you ain't for me. You will be by yourself. You, because God wants you whole. Didn't I just read it to you? 
God wants you whole. He ain't mad about what you like. As long as there's room for growth in God, y'all quiet. He may, she may not speak in tongues right now, but is it room for growth? So y'all quiet. Pastor, he don't have no, she don't have no job. Is it room for growth? Are you willing to get the job? Do they have potential? See, y'all going to make me really tell y'all, ain't y'all? Y'all really going to make me go ahead and tell y'all. Uh-huh. Huh? Huh? He live at home. Don't miss it, boo. Don't miss it. Because he might be saving his money to buy you a house. Don't miss it, boo. Don't miss it. He might be getting his credit game together. Don't miss it, boo. Because you got your girls telling you, he living at home. But you prayed. And he living at home. But did you know that he didn't saved up $50,000? And he didn't paid off his student loans? Oh, y'all quiet, y'all quiet, y'all quiet. I ain't getting nothing. I said he didn't paid off his student loans. And he living at home, he do pay rent. Y'all quiet. And all he asking God to do is send him Miss Wonderful. And when Miss Wonderful show up, he gonna buy a house. He gonna put down a $30,000, huh? He gonna put $30,000 down and move you out the hood. So you can leave all them old nagging, mad, and angry women, friends of yours, still in the hood. Tell me he living with his mama. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He got his gang tight. Yeah. I said, all God wants you to do is have peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. When you pray, you need to ask God, open my eyes so I can see. Oh, Lord. Open my eyes so I can see the potential. Y'all quiet. See, some brothers in here like, please help them, Pastor. Please help them. That they don't, they don't miss me. Let them know I, I got potential. I got, I got plans. I'm working some plans. Don't, don't sleep on me. Okay. Go to Mark 14. We're going to look at Jesus. Hold on a minute. Mark 14, we're going to look at Jesus and how everything that he was going through, he still knew to pray. Even though he was going through some stuff. See, can I help you with something? No matter what you're going through, keep your prayer life. Okay, let me look at y'all. I don't care what you're going through. Don't disconnect from God. I done been through some stuff in my life. And I'm going to be honest. There were days I didn't pray. Y'all all right with that? If I say that, see, that's, that's keeping it real. Not cussing, keeping it real. But telling you how it is as a believer, a human being. There have been some days I was upset. And I, and, and I told God, no, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you. Uh -uh. Okay, thank you, sis. I'm not talking to you. I heard him. Come here. No. Nope. Tears rolling down my face. No. 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 Because I wanted to blame somebody for what I didn't know. Because I wasn't willing to study the word of God. So I let people tell me what God said. Instead of me going to the word. And when people fail me, I got mad at God. Okay, I'm going to let y'all think about what I just said. I said, there were people who I listened to, and they failed me. God didn't fail me. And instead of being mad at that nonsense they taught me, and going back and researching it and finding the truth of it, I got mad at God. And I told God, I'm not talking to you. I'm good on you. Wake me up at three in the morning. I said, I'm good on you. See, y'all, y'all, oh, see. Okay, see, y'all playing with me. I said, I'm good with you. You didn't do me right. You made me look like a fool. I looked it like a fool. I told everybody you would come through for me. 
and you ain't come through. Now I look stupid. And you know what he told me one day? He said, I got time. I don't know how much time you think you got. So then I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, what, 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 what you saying, Lord? What you saying? I need to get it together. See, he outside of time. I'm the one in time. And he let me know, you ain't got a whole lot of time going back and forth with me. So let me tell you what you did so that you can fix it so you don't do it no more. Go to Mark 14. So Jesus is going through something, so we're going to walk this out to see what Jesus is going through. Y'all all right? Mark 14. Woo. Let me get over here to Mark 14. Give you a chance to get over here. Mark 14, verse number one. So we're going to follow this thread all the way out. This is a situation where Jesus is getting ready to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Before he gets there, he's dealing with all kind of stuff. He's dealing with all kind of stuff. Verse number one. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft to put him to death. So here Jesus is. Folks then started plotting on him. I'm going to tell you right now, people going to plot on you. But don't let that stop your prayer life. Okay, I'm going to raise my hand. I saw the sister back there. Folks going to plot against you. But don't lose focus. Don't be standing there telling me, I'm praying against my enemies. I'm going to pray against my uh -uh. I, I know you're plotting against me, but I ain't going to lose focus. See, the moment that you lose focus and start concentrating on folks that's trying to do you wrong, you get out of position to get before God and get your strategy and your answer. So the Bible says... They want to take him by craft. See, you got folks that like to work some craft. But see, this is what I like about God. God will give you insight on people. See, and some folks, I know what they're about. I see you. Watch this. We say it like this. Game, no game. Okay, let me go over here. See, the priests come from among the people. A game, no game. I've been street too. So I know when somebody playing game on me, y'all quiet. And some of the biggest game players are in the church. Some of the biggest game players are in the church. You want to get messed over? Join a church. That's why you got to have a prayer life so you'll know who to deal with because God's still dealing with them and working on them and who to deal with. You need to know who to talk to about your trouble and who not to talk to. He says, and they decide they won't get him back craft. Watch this. But they, but they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, watch where Jesus is. Okay. Woo. Trying to keep this hair out my eyes. Y'all excuse me. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. Jesus is at the leper's house. Somebody that's diseased and contagious. And Jesus is at his house. Listen what it says. And Jesus was at the house of Simon the leper, and he was at his house eating. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, or sphincter, very precious, and she break the box and pour it on his head. So Jesus is at the house of a man that is contagious, and he eat. The question I have to ask us is, are we willing to go around people that other folks say is contagious? Are we willing to deal with folks, y'all quiet, that other folks won't deal with? Jesus is at a leper's house, and according to the customs of leopards, you don't deal with them. See, you got to have a prayer life in such a way that God tell you to deal with folks that other folks didn't put down. See, I got a situation in my life right now. I'm dealing with a sister that everybody telling, telling her and telling me she cursed. She ain't cursed. Y'all just low down. Y'all done done a derby. 
Y'all church folks done, done her dirty, and y'all don't want her to talk to nobody so that they can, she can tell them how low down and dirty y'all been towards her. Oh, y'all quiet. See, folks is talking about don't hang around her, don't be around her. But the, the, the real truth of it is, is they don't want nobody to know what they done done to her. So what they do is throw her away. But I didn't told them, y'all might call her a leper, but I'm going to find out what y'all done done to her. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to find out what I can do to solidify her and bring her back. Come on, y'all. I'm going to find out how to make things right in her life. I'm not going to throw her away. Y'all done done her dirty, and you just don't want nobody to know what you done done to her. Y'all done messed over her. Y'all quiet. He says... And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at meat, there came a woman with an alabaster box of ointment of spinkner with precious and was precious. And she break the box and pour it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this wasted of ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pences and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. See? When you want to do something to be a blessing to folks, you can't let folks stop you. Because they feel like, you should get that to the poor. You should do this. You're doing that wrong. Why are you doing that? You don't know what God told me to do. I'm doing this because me and God didn't already had a conversation. See, this woman was considered a harlot. Some, some interpretations about her is she was a harlot. But she understood something. I got to go get this thing right. So, so God has spoke to her and told her, Jesus is getting ready to go through something, but I want you to take this ointment, precious, and I want you to anoint him. Now watch what the Bible says about her. And Jesus said, let her alone. See, 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 when folks understand what God is doing in your life, they'll speak up for you. Jesus told them, leave her alone. Watch this. Why trouble her? She have wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always, and who, whensoever you shall, wheresoever you shall, uh, excuse me, whensoever you will, you may do them good, but me you ought not always. She said, she have done this, excuse me, she have done what she has done. She has come aforehand to anoint my body for the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the good news of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she have done shall be spoken of a memorial of her. He said, everybody will always remember her. What she has done is going to be a memorial. Every time the gospel is preached, she going to show up as a memorial. They going to talk about her, how she anointed me for my burial. This woman is remembered. We're talking about her right now in 2020. Jesus didn't lie. We still talking about this woman. Watch this. And Judas Iscariot, one of the 12, went out unto the chief priest, priest to do what? Betray him unto them. Watch this. Watch this. You're going to always have a Judas in your camp. You're going to always have somebody that will betray you in your camp. You better be able to recognize him. Let's see how we can recognize him. He says, and when they heard it, they were glad. The folks that found out that they had a betrayer in the group. Watch this. And they promised to give him some money. That's how you can re recognize your betrayer. All they talking about is money. It's always about money. Even if it means hurt you. Even if it means to betray you, you're going to always have somebody. you got to watch these folks. Watch this. But Jesus didn't lose sight. Now, y'all know if somebody mess up that money. Y'all not saying nothing. I said, somebody mess up that money. Y'all know how we get down. I'm coming through. I ain't calling. Okay. Okay. I'm pulling up on the grass. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm pulling up on the grass because I, I want to know, I want to know what happened to my money. See, y'all quiet. Y'all quiet in the sanctified church. See, see, but Jesus kept his focus. He didn't get off of focus, even though he knew he had a thief that was handling the bag of money. Even though he knew there was a thief among them and he would betray him for money, he didn't get off. He says in verse number 15, 16, 
And his disciples went forth and came into a city and found, as he had said. Now, Jesus told them, we're getting ready for the Last Supper. So they then went to another city and found the stuff that he said that they were preparing. And in the evening come the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and to say one to another, Is it I? And he said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is the one, is, is, it, is it one of the twelve that dip it with me in the dish? So now this, this has always perplexed me. Everybody asking, Is it me? You don't know if you got betrayal in your heart or not. Everybody, all 12 of them asking, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? You don't know what you have in your heart. And all of them had some betrayal in their heart. Let me tell you why. Because when they came to get Jesus, all of them ran and left him. Go down to verse 27. All done. Y'all all right? And Jesus said unto them, all of you shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen and I will go before the Galilee. But Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will I not. And Jesus said unto him, you really going to clown me. Verily I say unto you that this day, even in the night before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he answered more vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. And they came to the place which was called Gethsemane, and he saith unto his disciples, sit ye while I pray. So now he in the, he in the, he's in Gethsemane, and now he got to pray, because he knows what's coming. He didn't let none of the stuff that happened prior take him off his prayer. And he didn't let what he knew was going to happen take him off his prayer. He says, and he taken with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be sore amazed and be very heavy. And saith unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Wait here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed. If it were possible, this hour might pass from him. And he said, Father, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thy will be done. Can I say this? And then I'm almost done. When you go on before God, you got to get your will out the way. See, he had all the reason to get mad and call angels and tear things up. He could have prayed and stopped the whole thing. But Jesus says, no, not my will, but thy will be done. Because if I don't do your will, men won't be able to come into the kingdom. So even though I got a betrayers with me, even though I got a guy who been with me for three years, he didn't went and sold me out for money. Come on, somebody. I still got to stay focused on my kingdom assignment. Can I tell you something? I don't care what folks is doing. Stay focused on your kingdom assignment. Stay focused on what God told you. It don't matter who leave, who stay. Stay focused on your kingdom assignment. It don't matter who love you and who don't love you. Stay focused on your kingdom assignment. It don't matter if it's day or not. Stay focused on your kingdom assignment. And Jesus stayed focused on the assignment last part and he says now watch this he asked them to pray with him see that's another thing don't look for folks to pray for you and pray with you when you in a tough learn how to stand on your own two feet and pray will you pray with me some folks too troubled to pray y'all quiet some folks don't know how to pray they was tired some folks in your life, they just too tired to pray. You got to learn how to pray in your own storm. You got to learn how to go before God in your own storm. And don't let the fact that others won't pray for you keep you off. Last part. Thirty-seven. And he cometh and find them sleep, and saith, Peter, Simon, sleepeth thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch you and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them sleep again, for their eyes was heavy. Neither was there any that answered him. And he cometh the third time and say, Sleep on now, take your rest. It is enough, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinner. Rise up, let us go. He that betrayeth me is at hand. 
and immediately while he yet spoke, come up Judas. Can you imagine that? Now y'all know you're going to want to get down, especially if you got the ability to change the whole situation. Jesus told him in one uh, book, he said, I can call 12 legions of angels. I think that's 30,000 of angels. And they'll get me out of this situation. But Jesus said, no, I can't do that because I got to do the will. He says in 42, rise and let us go. For he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he had yet spake, come Judah with the 12 and, and with him a great multitude with swords and steeds. 46, and they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said, are you come out against me as a thief with a sword and with a stave to take me? I was with you daily in the temple, teaching the good news on the kingdom. And you took me not, but the scripture must be fulfilled. In John, in John, let me see. In John, it talks about how the same story, it talks about how when they came to take Jesus, they asked Jesus, are you the one we looking for? And he said, I am he. And the scripture says they fell backwards to the ground. Can you imagine having that kind of anointing on you after you pray? That people come for your life and ask, are you the one we looking for? And you say, it is I. And they fall back to the ground. You never put your hands on them. The authority and the power that you have coming out of prayer knock them off their feet. Now, let me tell you this, and then I'm done. If I ask somebody, are you the one we looking for? They open their mouth and say, it is I. And I fall backwards to the ground. I'm going to leave you alone. Well, Pastor, you know, the word on the kingdom just keeps getting better and better and better. And we'd like to, uh, again, thank you for tuning into today's ministry. And if you would like to give into this ministry, the Hour of Power or MWAM, you can follow the prompts that are on your screen right now. And, you know, we'd love to receive your offerings and your if you're uh, a tither and you don't have a place where you uh, tied to right now, of course, you can tie to increasing faith ministry. Well, Pastor Curtis, you know, the Bible says in Malachi chapter three, verse number 10, it says, bring ye all the tithe to the storehouse that there right. may be provision in my house that you might prove me. He would said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you, the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to that receive. And Pastor Curtis, people need to know that this is a personal thing. It is God's way of t uh, keeping the covenant connection. Yes. It is your way, keeping the covenant connection right. with God. Right. And so we thank God for all of you who are following the principles of tithing the bible also lets us know that we should give mm -hmm. and so we thank god for those of you who are supporting mwam money with a mission yeah you know pastor mwam takes care of so many needs of so many people it's money with a mission it always comes in and goes out to help not only fam families single people just the needs of people overall the bible tells us that we are blessed to be a blessing to all the families of the earth are blessed right. and mwam is a way for us to do that. So if you want to give to MWAM, you can follow the prompts on the screen, cash app, dollar sign, increasing faith, cash app, dollar sign, our, um, uh, our power, our power. That's right. Or you can go to our website, uh, www.ifministry.com, give LaFi increasing faith ministries or PayPal. Tammy Steven 66 at Yahoo. And if you can't, uh, or if you don't have any of those platforms, you can always call us at 313-401-5953. Pastor Tammy, I'd love to pray for and hear from you. Yes, Thank you do. for supporting this ministry. It means so much to us. And for all the people that we've touched over the years in WAM, we want to say thank you. God bless you. And we really appreciate your help. God bless. God bless.